Welcome back to Crux Stationalis. Today we head to the Roman Station Church of St. Peter's Basilica. The Baroque is a spectacle of color, emotion, and drama, fantasy rising to frenzied ecstasy. Bernini's Baroque was art designed to serve religion, and more specifically to serve the needs of the Counter-Reformation. The intense Baroque was art to move the masses. It was popular art in the truest sense. The symbols which express our faith, the multiplied and layered signs, in the liturgy, the art, the architecture, they point us to something beyond themselves, and some even affect precisely what they signify. It is an immersive world, rising from the stones of our churches and at the same time elevating to an immensity beyond our imagination. The masters of the Baroque throw us into the gleam of gold, the clouds of incense, the monarch pope, the sacred art and evocative music. And we glean that we are truly surrounded by a reality beyond our nature, that we have access to the supernatural, to the very God-man himself through his church. It is John Lorenzo Bernini who is the grand guide of this Baroque experience between the pilasters and pavement of St. Peter's Basilica. He did this by camouflaging the very physical structures that underpinned what we gaze upon. Bronze which appears to float, which twists and turns. The movement of the Baroque is only surpassed by the highest form of art, the greatest act of Holy Mother Church, for which all else is inspired, that is, the sacred liturgy. Bernini was only 25 when he was called to the service of Pope Urban VIII, Maffeo Barberini, a relationship which preceded the pontificate 15 years, as Bernini was introduced to Barberini at the age of 10. It is said that Pope Urban VIII made comment to Bernini, It is our great good luck, Cavaliere, to see Maffeo Barberini Pope, but we are even luckier that the Cavaliere Bernini lives at the time of our pontificate. Neapolitan-born, brash and young, standing at the center of his family and friends and patrons, sketching his ideas as quickly as they came to him, this artist with extreme talent wasn't a one-hit wonder. Instead, his gifts deepened through his relationship with Maffeo Barberini, who encouraged him to study beyond sculpture, painting and architecture as well. Further, the genius of Bernini gave his creations a distinctive style, one doesn't find hardly a straight line or flat plane in any of his works. Rather, we encounter a play of light, shadow and movement, alluring, whimsical, passionate. A relationship like that of Julius II and Michelangelo, Urban VIII looked upon Bernini almost like a son. Elected almost unanimously as Pope on the 6th of August in the year 1623, he was expected to return the papacy to the humanistic spirit of the Renaissance, abandoning the rigidity it was forced to embrace in response to the Protestant revolutions. His patronage in art and science would engage the church in the intellectual movements of the 17th century. He had his Michelangelo, the young Bernini. The human body was the inspiration for Michelangelo, as we know from his masterpieces and Bernini would influence a further passion into the bodily form. Their art was an expression of their personal faith, and so, as Catholic as Catholic can be, this meant embracing body and soul of the human subject, the very fullness of the human person which is brought up into heaven in the ascension of Jesus. The artistic career of Bernini was sustained by his religious practices, he followed the exercises of St. Ignatius of Loyola and received communion twice a week. And so, with this inspiration, when Bernini came to St. Peter's, the structure was there. He had the freedom to shape its spirit. The baldacchino above the high altar was his first commission. Without a formal contract from the Pope, this project was baptism by fire. The nave of the basilica spanned more than 600 feet, and the top of the dome rose 400 feet above the pavement of St. Peter's. What monument could enter into this grand space? From small wax models to grander plaster and wood models, the last roughly full size, the final masterpiece relied upon Bernini's eye more than measurement. 
Study after study from different angles, with alterations and experimentations, this was the three-year project of Bernini. Two inspirations were the basis of the baldacchino. The canopy over the sedia gestatoria, the old way to carry the Pope in procession, and a twisted column salvaged from Constantine's original Basilica of St. Peter's. Tradition holds it's the very column Jesus had leaned against in the Temple of Jerusalem. An extravagant cost to cast the bronze baldacchino, more and more bronze was needed. Bronze from the Dome of St. Peter's was used, already stripped under Paul V to lighten the weight of the dome, but still more was needed. Imperiously, Urban VIII Barberini ordered the bronze to be taken from the portico of the Pantheon. To highlight this sort of looting, it is said, what the barbarians did not do, the Barberini did. As this was happening, Carlo Moderno, the master of works of the Vatican, died in the year 1629. Urban VIII then placed Bernini in this post as architect of St. Peter's and superintendent of public works in Rome, saying, Bernini was made for Rome, and Rome was made for him. His is a rare man, a sublime artist, born by divine disposition, and for the glory of Rome to illuminate the century. He would stay at this job for 51 years until his death at the age of 82. I would be remiss if I failed to say the following after giving you all this drama of the Baroque. Without the Baldacchino, we would be lost in the soaring Baroque of mosaics, gilt, marble, niches, columns, chapels, tombs. The very meaning of the church building would be lost, the papal altar, that very place where God and man meet, joined in communion. And this altar sits above the tomb of St. Peter himself. Lent gives us many scenes from the life of this poor fisherman, many scenes, though not being Pope, to which we too can relate from denying Christ thrice to professing love and reparation, we stand in union with Peter, the weak fisherman, and are only asked by Christ to cast our net into the deep. He does the rest. And when the waters are rough, Christ asks us to believe, to increase our faith, and to keep our eyes upon him.